and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Hope and I am a senior portrait and wedding photographer that serves both Charleston and Savannah. And this YouTube channel is where I share education for photographers as well as a little bit of a peek into my life living in the low country and happy spooky season. It is officially October. It is my favorite time of the year, like literally ever. Um, fall is just the highlight of my year every single year. Pumpkin spice, cooler temperatures, beautiful foliage. I'm here for it and I am so excited. But in the low country where I live, it also means it is the crazy busy season of shooting. Depending on where you live in the world, if you're a photographer, you probably have a different busy season, but this is the height of craziness for me here in Savannah and Charleston. I actually have a wedding every single weekend in the month of October, and they are all in different states. One of those is actually my future brother and sister-in-law's wedding, and I'm the photographer and a bridesmaid. So when I say it's about to be bananas, it's about to be bananas to the point I haven't had time to do my nails so we're just gonna disregard that but I thought that it would be really fun to kick off this month of crazy shooting with a little bit of a peek into what the process looks like for me to pack my gear and prep for traveling for a wedding like I mentioned all four of the weddings that I have this month are in different states in the East Coast which means that I am packing up my gear and traveling and have to have every single thing that I need to successfully photograph a wedding with me in all of these different places weekend after weekend so I've done a couple videos on this channel about how I pack my gear for weddings so how I physically keep my gear safe and put it in the bag that allows me to fly with it so I'm not really going to talk about that today but I am going to talk about 10 things that I bring with me for every single destination wedding that I photograph some are going to be gear related some are going to be like little life hacks that I have found really helpful and they're all kind of random and eclectic things but I think that they'll be really really helpful and it's just things that are front of mind for me as I literally pack my gear to day to go to a wedding this weekend in Charleston. My bags are sitting off to the corner. That's what I keep looking at. Um, and all my gear is charging as we film this right now. So let's go ahead and dive right into those 10 things that I bring with me to every single destination wedding that I photograph. Number one, I touched on briefly, but it is the camera bags that I have with me for every single wedding that I shoot. I'm not going to dive into this too much just because I do have other videos on the channel about that. I will link them down below if you want to watch but I've had these two camera bags for years now, probably six, seven years, and they have never done me wrong. They keep my gear really, really safe. Um, they are they allow me to keep it really organized and like compact, which makes it really easy when I'm traveling long distances. So those two bags are the Think Tank Airport V 2.0. So that is the really big suitcase that's a carry-on size bag where I keep the majority of my gear when I'm traveling for weddings, especially if I'm flying. It fits in the overhead compartment, so my gear is always with me. And then I also have a Camret Lyra backpack. And that is the smaller bag that I keep my lenses in on my wedding day and actually keep on my body so that I can switch out lenses throughout the day, depending on what I'm shooting. So I'm going to link both of those bags below. I just knew that I would get questions about it if I didn't mention them, but there are videos for each of those bags on this channel. If you want to watch the second thing that I bring with me to every wedding I shoot, whether it's destination or not, is that I bring backups of the most popular gear that I use use on a wedding day. So my most used gear is obviously my camera body and also my 50 millimeter lens. And so I bring a backup of both of those things with me. I actually bring two camera body backups and a backup 50 millimeter lens so that if anything were to go wrong, um, I have backups of everything that I need to successfully photograph a wedding. Um, and I actually keep one of those camera bodies in one of those 50 millimeter lenses in my backpack the whole entire time I'm traveling. So all of my gear goes into that big think tank that I mentioned, the carry-on size suitcase, except for one of the backup bodies and the backup 50 millimeter lens. And that way, if God forbid something were to happen to that big think tank of gear, if it were to get stolen, if it were to get lost at the airport, if they wouldn't let me put it in the overhead bin, which has happened, um, I can still have a camera and a 50 millimeter lens on me to photograph a wedding in its entirety. So I always recommend keeping at least one camera body and lens on your body while you're traveling. Um, just keep it with you in your carry-on bag um, or in your personal item even. But just making sure that you have those on you is really important and that you have backups of the gear that you use most often on a wedding day. Number three, the third thing that I bring with me, um, especially for the wedding I'm photographing this weekend in a hurricane, which I'm going to vlog for you, um, is extra flash batteries and just extra batteries in general. So um, the fourth thing is the charger that 
I use for these batteries. So I actually have that sitting here and I'm gonna link it below. This charger is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I have to have double A batteries for all of my flashes um, and for various other gear like walkie talkies that we sometimes use on the wedding day um, and my mics for filming, which we don't always use, but just in case we always have so many batteries. So I used to have to bring those little four battery chargers um, with me to every wedding. So I would have to bring like four or five of those to fit all of these batteries until I invested in this guy. So these are the rechargeable in a loop batteries. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. In a loop. Um, I also have some just energizer ones here, but typically I use the in a loop batteries and bringing this massive charger with me makes it so much easier to carry them in one place. So this guy is a lifesaver and I just pack them all up in this plug in in the hotel room and make sure that they are all fully charged before the wedding day. And I love both of these things. So they'll be linked down below. The fifth thing that I bring with me that I actually didn't use to travel with. And I was so sad every single time that I forgot it is this Lexar multi card reader. And I've talked about this on the channel before, and I actually am not hundred percent positive. They still make this exact Exact version. So if they don't, I'm going to try to find something similar to link in the description below. But I, after a wedding day, do not go to sleep, even if it's three in the morning, um, until every single one of the memory cards is offloaded and backed up in at least two places because I am not messing around with your wedding photos. So this guy makes it so that I can plug all of my memory cards in from the day. It has four slots at one time, go jump in the shower, put on PJs, order room service, and know that they're all offloading at once. Otherwise, you have to plug in a card, let it offload for 30 minutes, unplug it, plug in another card, and it just takes a lot longer and a lot more of your attention. Whereas this, you can just kind of set it and forget it while you get unpacked and showered after a long wedding day. And when you have shot for 12 hours and a place that you aren't familiar with and you haven't had dinner yet, just getting to plug them in and go take a shower and put on sweatpants is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So this gets put with my um, backup body and my backup lens in my camera backpack. It like sits perfectly in the middle. And that is how she comes with me to every single one of my destination weddings. The sixth thing that I bring with me is another thing that I have sitting here. And that is an SSD hard drive. And an SSD hard drive stands for a solid state drive which means that this hard drive doesn't spin. Um, so there's nothing in here that's going to break or um, move or destroy your images that you have backed up if it gets jolted around during travel. Um, so this is the Samsung one. I will link it down below. But like I mentioned, I will not go to sleep after a wedding until your photos are backed up in two places, which means that all of the images need to be backed up on this drive before I go to bed. Um, I used to use and still sometimes use a spinning hard drive, like a more classic hard drive. The problem with that is that if it gets bumped or if it moves, um, it is at risk of scratching that disc and ruining the images that you have saved there. So this SSD drive is a great alternative that is a little bit more safe to use when you are traveling. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's because it keeps your images safer. So highly recommend keeping one of these with you. I try not to keep my images backed up on my laptop just because it doesn't feel as safe to me um, and because it takes up so much storage on my laptop. So they get offloaded to a hard drive like this. The seventh thing that I bring with me to every single wedding, which is going to sound super obvious, but is actually really, really helpful to have when you are traveling for a back to back weddings like I'm about to be doing. And that is gear to clean all of your lenses. So this is like a little air puffer that gets dust out of all my lenses. I also have lens wipes and um, the little cloth. What are they called? little cloth wipes, I'm gonna forget what they're called, that don't leave scratches um, on your lenses. I have all of that with me and tucked in my camera bag at all times. And I, since I'm traveling a lot, don't clean my gear until I get to the destination that I'm going. So I have a routine the night before a wedding, no matter where I am, where I plug in all my batteries, clean all my gear, format all my memory cards, and I know that every single one of my clients is getting fresh, cleaned gear to use on their wedding day, no matter where I am in the world. The eighth thing that I bring with me, again, going to seem obvious, but it's extra camera batteries and extra memory cards. Um, and I think that it's important to mention that I have excess extra of all of these things. Um, I think I bring eight camera batteries with me and I bring somewhere between 12 to 15 memory cards with me. Um, and that is so I know that I have more than enough memory cards. I have enough for my second photographer if they don't have their own. And I have enough that if half of them corrupted, I still had enough to photograph a full wedding day. It's kind of like when you pack underwear for a trip and you pack like 15 pairs just 
just in case when you know you don't need them. I always do that with my batteries and my memory cards. Maybe not everybody does that with underwear. I don't know, but it really is helpful to have all of those in one place. Um, there was a time I was traveling for a wedding and a couple of my cards corrupted and I had more than enough. I didn't have to go rush and find a Best Buy. So it's really important to have extras of everything that you could possibly need just in case you're in a place where it's not easily accessible to find something like a Best Buy to buy backups. The ninth thing that I bring with me to every wedding day, but especially ones that I am traveling for is my Apple Watch. And I have not always had an Apple Watch. Um, I actually shattered my Apple Watch at a wedding I was photographing two years ago. My camera fell off of my body and down the stairs and smacked my watch and shattered it on the way down. It was a it was a whole fiasco. Um, but I didn't rebuy myself one for about a year and a half until my fiance got me one for Christmas. And now it is such a necessary part of my wedding day workflow because I keep my timeline for the wedding day on the watch. It really helps me to keep time. It helps me to communicate with my second photographer on the wedding day. And it's just a really easy way to stay on track with the timeline without having to check the time on your phone. Um, so I'm going to link the one that I have in the description and I have the sports band that is super, super comfortable to wear for a whole wedding day. And it really has become a part of my wedding day workflow that I don't know if I could live without at this point. So highly recommend some form of watch or smartwatch to keep on you to keep track of the timeline. And then the last thing, number 10, is that I always bring an extra pair of shoes and an extra outfit to photograph the wedding. Um, that is going to sound so silly to some of you. You're gonna be like, why would you waste one of those 10 spots on a pair of shoes? But let me tell you my life hack. Somebody told me this in my first year of photographing weddings and it has saved my feet and my back after 10 hours of photographing and carrying really heavy gear. I always bring two pairs of shoes, if not three, for every single wedding that I photograph. I have a nicer, dressier pair of shoes that I wear for the entire morning and the ceremony. And then I switch to a different pair of flats or flip-flops for portrait time. And then sometimes I switch into sneakers for the reception and changing the time type of support that your feet have throughout the wedding day really helps you to not be in serious pain the next day. Just trust me, I use Rothy's. I will link those below. Um, I think there's a coupon that you can use from my account that I, I just love them. I have so many pairs of them. I have the sneakers, I have the loafers, and I have the flats. I prefer the loafers on wedding days. They are just wildly comfortable. And then I always bring a backup outfit as well. Um, and I try to bring layers. So I try to bring at least a cardigan or a jacket just in case. And I bring two of whatever the jumpsuit or dress is that I'm going to wear for the wedding, just in case something happens because you truly never know. And then the last thing, the bonus that I always bring with me when I'm traveling is that I try to bring my favorite energy drinks. I wish I was sponsored by Celsius. I am not. Um, or snacks to have with me in the hotel. Um, if you've ever photographed a wedding, you know that sometimes we have no idea if we're going to get fed, whether it's in our contract or not, it just sometimes doesn't happen. Boone is at my feet. He says hi. Um, but you always want to be sure that you are well fed and well energized for a wedding day. And so I always pack extras with me just to be sure I know I'm going to have something to eat. But I hope this was helpful. I hope it was insightful to hear just some of the little things that I bring with me, but that make a really big difference for destination weddings. I am gearing up for a crazy couple of weeks. I'm actually photographing a wedding in Charleston this weekend as Hurricane Ian hits. So next week, you guys are going to get to see the vlog of how all of that goes. Um, but let me know in the description what else you want to see during this crazy busy fall season and what you are gearing up for during your busy shooting season. But I hope you guys have an amazing week. We'd love to have you subscribe. Our goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers and we are almost there. I post new videos every single week, so I will see y'all then. Bye.